So all you need today for this painting that we're going to do is your uh, primary colors of red, yellow, and blue, and some green and brown and some white, and you can put some black on there um, too if you want. These have really nice bristles and they're great for your trees and your bushes, and this is going to be used for your background, okay? And then we have a flat synthetic brush, chiseled edge, and I have a flat um, a filbert brush, which is a chiseled edge and synthetic. And I also have a liner brush. So for the background for our boat painting, we are going to use blue. It could be a dark blue, ultramarine blue. And I'm going to add a little bit of green to that. You can just judge it to the color that you want your background. You can go more blue or more green. And I'm just going to a little bit of start going to the grade up a little bit. See how it changes the color. Not nice. Add as much blue and green as you want. A little bit of white if you want. Just adjust the colors to what you think you would like. Okay. And then you're just going to paint your whole background that color. This will be your background under painting and then we'll put our boat and our reflection there. So all you have to do is go back and forth with some nice long strokes and you can use a one inch brush, one inch flat brush. See, that, see how nice and plain that water is? It's going to be so clear that you'll be able to see a beautiful reflection of the boat. So make sure that it's completely dry before you transfer your boat pattern to your canvas. I'm just going to trace on my pattern onto my dry canvas. And I'm going to put some carbon paper underneath my drawing. that and then start tracing around so you'll get everything in shape and in place so you can use carbon paper you can paint over it's okay So I put together a kind of yellowy, greenish color. So yellow and a little bit of, I was trying to get more on the orange side, and a little bit of burnt sienna, burnt sienna, and so that's burnt sienna, yellow, a little bit of red, and some white, and we'll use that as our base color, so you can always highlight it. And I took a little jar of water, and I'm going to use that to make a glaze. I don't want, I want the paint to be transparent so I can see my lines, and plus I want to layer colors. So we'll do a glaze, and then we'll layer the colors. It'll be a new lesson for you. So make sure that the paint don't drip on you. So let's go in between these lines. That's too thick. Wipe off your brush and get some more water. I really like to have it more transparent.
take burnt sienna, add it to my brush and nothing else, just burnt sienna. Okay, and then I'm going to add that on this side. And I'm going to take that shadow and move it over to my paint. There we go. That's better. Now, make sure that all your brushes that you're using are going to be flat and chiseled edge, whether it's flat filbert or just plain flat. Just make sure they're filled. There. See that nice straight edge there? Now, what I want to show you is um, if, you want, if you don't have burnt umber, but you have burnt sienna, take your burnt sienna. Take your burnt sienna, so say you don't have burnt umber. See, that's burnt umber. Look how dark it is, right? And depending on the brand, that may be darker or lighter, you know. Brands have different colors for some reason. But anyway, so say you don't have any burnt umber, just take your burnt sienna and add a bit of black to it, okay? And you have that look. It's almost just the same. You can also add your burnt sienna and some blue, ultramarine blue. And you also get a really nice dark color, see? Darkens it up really nice. Let's see, too much blue. No, that brings it down to a nice dark So color. I would like to add some burnt umber, burnt sienna here because uh, I want to just uh, Get everything in place so we know what we got to work with. So I'm just going to put a bit of burnt sienna. If you don't have burnt sienna, just use a brown, cinnamon brown, or add some water to it. Make a watery, a watery burnt sienna. Look, I'm just dipping it in there, and I'm going to tap it off my tissue, okay? And then I'm just going to put that on there because I'm trying to see if I can save some of those lines. If I can't, we'll figure it out after. I'm not really worried too much about it. We'll just get something on here because we need to know where everything goes and make sure we get the shapes proper and all that good stuff, okay? Just to make it easy for you, these are baby steps. <laughs> Let's call them baby steps, why not? All right, so that's just that there. And I'm going to add a little bit of yellow. another coat of yellow just some yellow a little tiny bit of burnt sienna just to oops too much okay let's just go with a bit of yellow go into the boat again and we'll put that there like that a little tiny bit of white maybe experiment with your colors but these are the colors I'm going to use for now and I'm not going to water it down this time I'm going to go over this Start layering my paints. Bring that boat alive. Scrubbing it on. Get more paint when you need it. that we put on it's got a greenish tint because yellow and blue makes green so if you've got a blue background and you're painting over it with yellow it's going to turn green so it's um 
it's the way colors work. So we'll just keep adding layers until we get that color because it is kind of a greenish color in the picture, greenish yellow anyway. It's probably because of the same reason because the blue is, it, is surrounding it. So I'm just going to add some colors to this one here. Lines might be a little harder to detect, but, detect, but we will do our best to figure it out. See, as we layer the paint, it looks really coming to life. It's really nice. And you might say, well, why don't you just put on the yellows? Because you can see that the, the underpaintings, the, the layers that we put on, gives it this nice, thick, opaque look. And plus, we need to do it to make sure that we had to shape. I really like these shadows in here, so I'm not going to disturb them too much right now. I'm just going to add some of my yellow, my yellow, greenish yellow, just add a bit of uh, yellow and a bit of burnt sienna. a little bit of blue very pale blue too much with some white I want it whiter than blue I'm just going to paint in here so as you can see I'm trying to change the inside of the boat I found the white was just plain white and um, so I'm just gonna add a little bit of color in there so what you can do is trace out the inside where the seat is and get an idea where the seat is and everything see how I traced it from the picture So you'll see when I send you the pattern, I'll make a better pattern than this. But you can see I just traced out the lines of the seat and then you can make it look like a seat there. So we'll go with that because it's, it's nicer than the other so one. So I'm just going here. to, for this here, I'm just going to make a, a cream color, kind of a, a warm beige. And I can make that on my white and my burnt sienna, see? Now you can buy bottle paints and uh, they'll be pre-mixed for you but I love making my own paints my own colors I should say now I'm going to show you something so I'm going to get a nice small flat brush so you might have to change brushes every now and then for each section um, nice round brushes and that. I'm going to try this flat brush I'm just going to go with my 
burnt sienna and a bit of white. Okay. Bit of white to that, a little bit of yellow, a little bit of blue. Blue and yellow makes green, that's why I did that. Okay, I'm gonna get a greenish, a greenish um, brown, greenish brown. All right, so yellow and blue makes green. Burnt sienna, brown, and white. It's kind of nice. See, you can make your own colors. So now I want to put a glaze over this right here and I'm going to get some yellow with some water first. Water and some yellow and a little bit of burnt sienna. And let's see what would look nice there. I wonder a bit of red. Won't add green this time because it, uh, blue this time because it will turn it green. But that's a nice color. Look at that. More yellow because you want to stay on the yellow side, okay? And some water. See how you can see the water is in there. See it's clear. But I want it even more watery than that. I want it. Just dip your brush in water and put it on your palette. Alright, I think that's alright. Let's try it. Let's see what happens. Just going to paint right over that. That's nice. I found it too yellowy. But that was our base coat, so we needed that anyway. More. Just using a flat brush. Bit of shadow behind here, make that stand out. Just your burnt umber, or burnt sienna, and a bit of black if you need it. I think I'm going to make a, a little bit of an orange glaze. I really like that orange glaze that was there. Some yellow and red. And um, 
water. A little more on the red side. Let's add a little bit of Stick to your flat, whatever you're comfortable with. I'm going to add a little bit of white on my brush. I probably picked up a small bit of burnt sienna that was left on my palette. And I'm just going to highlight this little, these little guys right here. So you put your brown on first and then you put your highlight on top of those. It's right on the edge. Oops. I covered that one up by accident, so I'm just going to put it back. It's got to have that dark edge to make it look 3D. 3D. Okay, make sure it's nice and dark, even if you got to add a little bit of black. Make sure you got a chiseled edge or a small round brush. See, it makes it stand out. See? It makes it jump out at you. This is an acrylic paint marker. Okay? It's an acrylic paint. But because you're, if you're having a problem with your brushes, trying to get a straight line or whatever, you can use the marker. So I'm trying to get that nice straight line here. Maybe I'll move down this way so I won't. So I'm just going to put the... Try that got to go straight across. Now see that's a marker so you can get the, uh, not a marker, it's an acrylic paint, this acrylic paint, okay? Acrylic paint marker. So you can use this in your acrylic paintings when you're having a hard time getting a straight line. So I use that sometimes. It'd be nice to get them in different colors. See? So that's kind of nice. Now I have to adjust that when that dries. This I'll... is an acrylic paint marker. Okay? It's acrylic paint. But because you're, if you're having a problem with your brushes, trying to get a straight line or whatever, you can use the marker. So I'm trying to get that nice straight line here. Maybe I'll move down this way so I won't. So I'm just going to put the. Try that. It's got to go straight across. Now, see, that's a marker, so you can get the. Uh, not a marker, it's an acrylic paint. This acrylic paint, okay? acrylic paint marker. So you can use this in your acrylic paintings when you're having a hard time getting a straight line. So I use that sometimes. It's nice to get them in different colors. See? So that's kind of nice. Now I have to adjust that when that dries. So as you can I see the marker worked nicely. Um, need to clean that up there with the background color. And we just have a little bit more work to do, and I think we're done. So let's make some lines. I'm going to use the ruler and my marker, my acrylic painting marker. Now you can use a brush. You can use a brush, you can use a, whatever you want. You can use a, a marker or just a regular permanent marker. that 
one is coming up here and around this. So we'll just highlight that and that will bring it out then. That piece of rope here is actually coming up around the boat. And a little hook. I didn't see the hook. It's coming up. It's tied around there. It's coming up here. And there's a little hook up here, so the rope is uh, coming up here. Okay, so you have a rope there. You got one coming out of the boat. And uh, we don't have put all the ropes in. We're just going to make it look like just some ropes here going down behind there. And um, I think that's enough. I really don't want to. Okay. So, I'm going to line up this here. So these pins are, are uh, markers, acrylic painting markers, are great for straight lines, especially if you're doing houses, or things like we're doing here. See how much nicer that is? See? And I think we're doing good. Just put another couple of lines here just to uh, make it look like wood. All right. Yeah, that gives a little bit of depth. Nice. So I really like those markers. Easy to work with. So I'm just going to highlight my rope. I'm just going to get um, a round brush. And I'm going to get some white with a little bit of um, burnt sienna and yellow. And I'm going to use that for a highlight. So all I have to do is put a little highlight on this here, just that little round circle that we made. And I think we made one right here too. A little more white. Bring it out more. And the rope is just bring over these little lines, okay? The bright, bring more from the right to the left or the left to the right, it's up to you. Just bring it out like that, see? Little taps of color. All right, tap, 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 tap.
see. I do need a couple little lines right here, skinnier lines, a little bit here, and um, what can I do with that? I think I need to darken that a little bit there. See, these things you probably wouldn't even notice if you left it alone, but because you're painting, you notice these things. Right? So any little noticeable things like that, you go right ahead and I'll fill them in. It's not fussy about that there. I'm going to darken that out a little bit. And I'm going to darken that out right here. I think that looks better. You might say, well, how do you know when to stop? Well, uh, yeah. one way to know when you want to stop is when you're just tired of it. You're just tired of poking and picking at it. and You like it, you say, I really like it, but you know, I can do this and I can do that. And, and when you're really tired of it, just stop. 